Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to take a look at the process for calculating credit card debt using a Google Sheet. Now, the first thing that you need to do is go into your drive. So I'm going to start presenting now. And when you're in your drive, there is this new plus sign up at the top. If you click on that and go down to Google Sheets, you can then choose to create a blank spreadsheet. Once you are in your blank spreadsheet, then you can name your spreadsheet whatever you want. In this case, I'm going to name this Exploring Credit Card Debt. Right. You can also resize your columns however you need to in order to be able to fit your headers and things so you can read everything. So my very first thing that I want to put in here is the number of payments. Resize that again so that just that part fits. I also need to know what my beginning balance is. My interest that I'm charged. Expand that just a little bit. the payment that I'm making, and then my balance after payment. Resize those a little bit as well. I'm going to bold those so that we can kind of see what our headers are. Now, as you're going through and trying to calculate credit card debt, you want to keep track of how many payments you've made so far. So to do that, I'm going to type in a one for my beginning number of payments, but sometimes it takes a while to pay off your credit card debt. I don't really want to have to have that, um, that number take up much of my time to, to type in. So I'm going to set up an equation equals parentheses. What this means is that this cell that I'm currently typing in, it's called A4. Cells in sheets are always named after the column followed by the row number. So this is column A, row four, so this is cell A4. So cell A4 is going to equal whatever is in cell A3, my previous payment number, I'm just gonna add one onto it and close my parentheses. So right here you can see that I have that equal sign, I have parentheses containing my operation that I'm doing, and then I'm identifying where I want the spreadsheet to actually pull the number from that's going to add one onto to equal two, which is my next payment number. Now the cool thing about this is that if I make sure that my cursor is hovering right over this little tiny box right here that is in the bottom right hand corner when the cell is actually selected, then this bolded plus sign appears. Now when that bolded plus sign appears, you want to left click and drag downwards and that is going to copy and paste this equation into all of these other cells. Now as I click on these, you can see that for example, cell A8, that says that it equals whatever was in A7 plus one. Now, no matter how many payments I have to make, I can always click on that last payment number and drag that down in order to continue um, having the spreadsheet actually write in those numbers for me. I'm a little tongue tied today. Now my beginning balance. Right now you've been working with credit card charges of about $500. But what if it was something else? Let's try, $750. Let's say I want to get a nice laptop. If it takes me more than the month that I charge that in to pay this off, then I'm going to be start I'm going to start getting charged interest. Let's say my in my credit card charges me 26% APR. Now, in order to actually work with that, that's an annual percentage rate, so a yearly percentage rate. What I need to do is turn that yearly percentage rate into a monthly percentage rate because credit cards are always billed to you um, every month. They're not billed to you just once a year. So what's going to happen here is I need to divide that 26% by 12. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. See, 26 divided by 12 equals 
about 2.16, and that six keeps repeating. So I'm gonna round that six up to a seven, kind of cut off that percent so that it's a little bit more usable for me. And I'm gonna write that in next to that, that interest charged so I know what percent I'm actually working with. That's gonna make it a little bit easier for me to write out my equation. So the interest, this is actually telling me that I will be charged 2.17% of my balance at the beginning of the month every single month. So that beginning balance is going to change as I pay off some of this debt, but I'm always gonna be charged that same percent. So to set this up in an equation, percent of means your percent value times your beginning balance. The tricky part, percents can only be used when you resolve that percent sign back into the number. All right, so 2.17% actually means 2.17 out of 100. That's what percent literally means in math terms. So if I take 2.17 out of 100, I'm dividing that number by 100. So what I'm really doing is setting this equal to my beginning balance. I'm gonna click where that's located. So B3 is where my beginning balance is located in this row. I'm going to multiply it, which is this asterisk here. The asterisk can be found above the eight on your keypad times that 2.17 divided by 100. Now, when you work that out, that becomes 0 0.0217. So that's what I'm gonna type in. Close my parentheses, hit enter, and what was just calculated is that I'm going to be charged about $16 and let's say, let's round up 28 cents to borrow their $750 for that first month by letting that money roll over on my credit card and not paying it off before my payment was due the month that I charged it, I am now being charged interest. That's how much money I have to pay them for borrowing their $750 for a month. And I forgot a, a column here. So I'm gonna add that in. To add in a column, if you do what I did, you can click at the top of the column, right click, and it opens up this menu. Now in this menu, I can insert a column either to the left or to the right of the one that I just clicked on. Now I need to know what my balance is after that interest was charged. So I'm gonna insert one to the left of that payment column so that I can actually add that detail in. If you're yelling at the screen and saying, but you need this piece, you were right, I do need this piece. So I'm gonna type in balance after interest. We need to figure this out before we can actually determine our payment. So balance after interest. I owe them $16.28 more than I did before. Now more means addition. So I'm going to take that 750 plus my interest, close my parentheses. Now notice I'm using the locations of both of these. I want this thing to automatically calculate this as I go further down into the table. So I'm not typing in the numbers, I'm purposely choosing the location within the spreadsheet that Sheets should actually draw these numbers from. When I hit enter, I get $766 and about 28 cents. Now that I know what my balance is after the interest, I can calculate how much I actually have to pay. Let's say I'm gonna be charged 7% as my minimum payment. I have to pay off 7% of what I'm borrowing from the credit card company in order to make my minimum payment. So now we have to calculate what that is. And again, that's 7% of the balance after that interest was added in. So I'm gonna type equals, open parentheses, and I'm going to click where my balance after interest is, right, times, because percent of a value is that percent times that value. So I have my balance after interest, and now I need to multiply by 7%. Remember, percent has a mathematical meaning. You have to put that mathematical meaning back into the number before you use it. So I'm multiplying by seven out of 100. Seven out of 100 is 0 0.07. So I'm gonna type 0 0.07, close my parentheses, hit enter, and I need to pay off $53 and about 64 cents in order to make my minimum payment. If I pay less than that, then I'm gonna be in trouble with the credit card company. As long as I make that minimum payment though, I'm good. 
Now, after that payment's been made, my balance is going to be what I owed them, which is my balance after interest, minus what I paid them because I owe them less now that I paid off part of my debt. And less means subtraction. So now I owe them $712.64 approximately. This is the amount that is going to transfer down to my next line to be able to start the next row of calculations. So in order to do that, you're going to use something, basically substitution. So I want whatever is in F3 to show up in F4. So I'm just going to say that they're equal to each other. So in B4, I'm going to say equals, and then I'm going to click on F3 so that now this reads that B4 equals F3, hit enter, and now that number has translated over. Now we're ready. We're ready for the fun stuff. Ready for this to magically fill in? I'm going to click on my beginning balance, that last number that I just put in, and I'm going to hover over that little box in the lower right-hand corner so that my cursor turns into this bolded plus sign. I'm going to left-click and drag down. Now, I might have to drag further than I already have. Notice nothing happened, but that's because there's nothing over in column F for it to copy over. So I'm going to keep dragging these down. Now, where I had calculations, it's showing up as zeros because it doesn't have anything to calculate with yet. As I keep dragging this down, more of this is going to fill in until this very last column, ready for the magic? Poof. Now, here's the crazy part. This is through 14 months of payments and I'm only down to $366.73. This is crazy. It's gonna take me a long time to pay off this debt. Let me keep dragging this down. Let's see how long it actually takes. You can click at the bottom here and drag these equations down as well. And they will continue to fill in just like it, they did before. If you go a little overboard, it's not gonna be that big of a problem. I'm only down into the 200s. Oh goodness, I'm already at two years of making payments and I still haven't paid it off yet. Let's keep going. Get all the way down to where I might be able to pay it off. Let's say once I reach a debt of about $50 or so, that might be reasonable to go ahead and pay off. Keep on going, because I'm not there yet. And in case you're wondering, I'm looking for the value in this column D to turn into 50 or less. That's when I know that I can pay it off. Still not there yet. Good grief, this is getting to be like a car loan. And this is the danger of credit cards when you only make the minimum payment. It can take you a very long time to pay off your debt. And that's without charging anything else. Your credit card is literally locked up in this debt cycle for a while. That's why it's so easy to get into this endless cycle of debt where you always owe more and you never manage to pay it off. I'm almost there, almost there. Let's go a couple more down, see if I can get it to the 50. I'm probably gonna have to go a few more. Yep, I'm gonna have to go a couple more months out. And this is a process where you just have to be patient and just kind of take it a little bit at a time. Almost. Let's try one more. <laughs> Not quite, I need to go even one more. So I'm gonna drag that down, drag this one down another. And I am gonna get that last column here in just a minute. Finally, we owe less than $50. We owe about $48.52. So I'm going to change this number to $48.52 so that my debt practically zeroes out. I owe so little, it's practically zero. It took me 55 months to pay off that $750.
by just making the minimum payment. Now notice that my payments got pretty small at one point because I'm only ever paying 7% of what I owe. So if you're only ever paying the minimum payment and your minimum payment is a percent, you might be making these very small payments for a while, but it's gonna take you forever to actually pay this off. Let's see, 55 months. 55 divided by 12 is four point something. So it took just over four and a half years to pay off this debt. And let's see how much we actually had to pay. So underneath the column, go all the way back up here, that says payments. So column E is my payments column. I wanna find out the sum of all of my payments. How much did I actually end up paying them? Equals sum, and then open your parentheses. And sum is the answer to an addition problem. So if I wanna find the sum of all of these numbers, I can type equals sum, open parentheses, scroll back up to the top where I wanna start selecting my numbers, I can left click and drag on down. And this is going to adjust my formatting for me. And the way that this is written is E3 through E57. That means that it's going to have all the numbers in the cells from E3 all the way through to E57. Um, Close my parentheses, hit enter. I originally purchased something that was $750. I paid that credit card company $1,057.03. It's up to you to determine if that extra money that I spent was worth it. It took me over four and a half years to pay it off. And it cost me a heck of a lot more than $750. Let's see how much more. To do that, column C is where we are dealing with interest charged. Let's look at that interest. The interest charge is always how much more we were having to pay than the original amount. So I have equals sum, open my parentheses. I'm gonna go back up here and drag from C3 all the way down to the line right above the equation that I'm writing. Close my parentheses, hit enter. I ended up having to pay $307.03 to the credit card company above and beyond the cost of what I purchased. So I almost paid half again what I put on the card to begin with. And it took me over four years, over four and a half years to pay this off. That is insane. This is why you have to know how to calculate credit card debt and be able to model this before you get yourself into a cycle of debt where you're just constantly having to make payments in the hopes that you can pay something off. I hope that you found this helpful.